Good evening. Welcome to the Monday, June 21st edition of the Board of Selectmen Highway Commissioner Cemetery Commissioners Meeting. Uh, Selectman Stephen Sullivan will be joining us remotely. Uh, please join me in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First on the agenda is the reorganization of the board. We do that every year after the election. Oh, Mr. Marcy. Um, well, first of all, Mr. Chairman, last year has been not very, very easy for the town or, or, or anybody. And I have to say you did a fantastic job as chairman um, leading us through a pandemic. I mean, it's a lot that goes into being chair, a lot of extra stuff that when you get calls and I, I I want to publicly thank you for leading us through that. Well, I, I appreciate that. And, uh, thank you, Mr. Marcy. Yeah, no problem. Um, I echo that. Yeah. He, he, by the way, oh, Harry did a fantastic strong job. Strong. Thank you. And, and it was a good year. It was, well, it wasn't a good year, but it was. Right. Things got done. And I think, you know, as as per our, you know, uh, Dudley tradition, the high vote getter um, usually gets offered the chair. You know, so. Based on last week's um, results, I would uh, I proudly nominate my my running mate Stephen Sullivan to be chairman of our board this year. Second. Motion and a second, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, before I accept the decline, I just want to echo Mr. Marcy. I know I was the chair right before the pandemic really took off, and I appreciate the effort you gave the town. It's a fine job. I mean, I know how many times we had to meet extra anyway, just as a member. I can't mm -hmm. imagine how many times you all rang as chairman. So probably the most, for most of the time we've had many decades. You did a great job guiding the town. I hope the people appreciate it. Thank you. So on that note, I'm going to decline. Um, I think it's time for somebody else to believe it, leave the charge. I decline the nomination of chair, but if, if I'm allowed by the chairman, I would proudly nominate John Marcy for chair. We ran an outstanding campaign in the re-election, and it's done nothing but wonderful things for the town. I'll second that. Motion and a second. Any further discussion on that? I accept the nomination. No further discussion. Maybe well, call the nomination to uh, the chair. Second. You. No, I know we have the other motion on the floor, but with John, with John second it, I think it's okay to go back to call the nomination. Okay. That's the motion you made, Stephen. Yes. And I second that motion. Are we doing all three and then closing them? Why don't we no, just one by one. let's dispose of the first motion and then the first motion or, or prior to doing that if there are now do we still doing a roll call vote when we have a remote participant yes when you when he's remote you do okay just double checking yeah. things think because he's remotely joining oh. us things seem to change okay. weekly i just wanted to confirm okay the motion on the floor is for mr marcy to be chair all in favor I, i'm sorry not all in favor uh, Mr. Sullivan, roll call, vote. roll call vote. See, things change. Peter Sullivan, I. Paul Joseph, I. Jay Johnson, I. Kerry Siganevich, I. Unanimous. Thank you. Five to nothing. Thank you, guys, for putting your trust in me. Thank you, John. You'll do another good job in following up the stellar work that Kerry did. I'd, I'd like that framed, please. <laughs> Mr. Marcy. Um, if, can we do nominations for vice chairman? Certainly. I'll be vice chairman. I'd like to nominate Jay Johnson. It's funny, I heard that over there because that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I'd like to nominate Jay Johnson to be vice chairman. This and year. I will second that. We have a motion and a second. Are there any other nominations for vice chair? Hearing none, any discussion on the matter? I would accept that nomination. You. I Glad move the nominations. That. For vice chair be closed. We, we vote on that as well. 
Just dispose of the first motion. second on that? Second. Oh. Motion and a second. Roll call vote to the Paul Joseph I. Stephen Sullivan I. John Marcy I. Jay Johnson. Gary Siganovich I. Unanimous. Next we have for clerk. I'd like to nominate Mr. Sullivan for clerk. Second. Do you hear that, Steve? Yeah, I'll cut that one. Thank you. Se second. Motion and a second for clerk. Any other nominations for clerk? None of them. I move the nominations for clerk be closed. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call vote. Paul, uh, Paul, uh, this is on the motion to close. Paul Joseph, aye. John Marcy, aye. Jay Johnson, aye. Dean Sullivan, aye. Gary Singer, are you unanimous. Time to do some chair shifting. Oh, I got to vote on Jay. We have to vote on Jay. Oh, uh, no, plus Steve. Oh, we didn't do uh, that? Steve, sorry. We have to vote on Steve. We have to vote on Mr. Sullivan. That's clerk, okay. That's clerk. A little rusty. We only do this once a year. <laughs> so we, did, we nominated in second, so what do we do now? Yeah. And we oh, close we, nominations. We close nominations, so now okay. roll call vote. Jay Johnson, aye. Paul Joseph, aye. John Marcy, aye. Kerry Siganovich, aye. I'm going to abstain because of the vote on myself. Unanimous. <laughs> now we shift chairs. All right. Thank you guys. <clears throat> All right, let's keep going. Going here, where are you going here? Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Mr. Chairman, the upcoming consent agenda here, non controversial reappointments. Thank you, Mr. Town Administrator. Next up on the agenda, we have the consent agenda, which contains a few things. One is the acceptance of the minutes of June 7th, 2021, reappointments of one year terms, and reappointments to three year terms. What is the board's pleasure on? Oh, there's actually some more. Capital Improvement Committee meeting, um, Zoning Board of Appeals, and a special town meeting date. Could I ask that we. Uh I know it's a consent agenda, but could we state specifically that the special town meeting date for town bylaws, Article 1, town meeting, that that meeting will be held on Monday, October 25th, 2021 at 7 p.m. And all I ask is that be entered into the record. Okay, we can pull that one out and vote on it separately if you want, Paul. Well, we, we just, uh, we're okay, I think, with okay. what we just did. All right, that's fine. Board members. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. Motion by Mr. Seganovich. We have a second. Second. Second by Mr. Joseph. Any discussion? Anybody here that's being reappointed that would like to say anything? No. Hearing none, call those. Call the consent agenda to a vote. All in favor? Oh, oh wait. Roll call. Roll call vote. Gary Siganovich, aye. Paul Joseph, aye. Jay Johnson, aye. Stephen Feldman, aye. John Marcy, aye. Unanimous. Thank you to all for being reappointed. Okay, up next is the town administrator's report. Mr. Ruda. Mr. Chairman, um, since our last, my last report in the interest of time, I'd like to. I don't have anything of any specific note uh, that uh, warrants eating up the three public hearing uh, that we have on tonight. So with the board's consent, I would okay. pass on my administrator's report for this week. Okay. Thank you, Jonathan. Then we'll move on to number five, which is new business. The so 5A is end of year transfers, Mr. Ruda. Similar to what we did at the last meeting, this will, again, this is something that we do every year. It usually takes two or three meetings to get all of our uh, end-of-year accounts adjusted and closed out. 
So if it's okay with the chair, I'll do the same as I did last week. I'll name the account number from the account to the account, and then the, and the board would vote to take any action on those transfers. Okay. Without any objection, Jonathan will do that. Mm -hmm. So it would come from account number 0001 429 571402, Highway Road Maintenance, in the amount of 10000 to account number 001 to legal. The next one would be 001 from Highway Road Maintenance, 22000 three fifty four thirty three to account zero 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 one four two three fifty seven hundred zero two snow removal and then the finally it would it would come from account zero 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 one four two nine five seven one four zero two highway road maintenance one thousand nine hundred twenty one nineteen to town clerk assistant zero 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 one one six one five one one three zero one Motion by Mr. Joseph. Total is 34275.52. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move that we approve those uh, three transfers that we just read in the total amount of $34,275.52. Second. Motion by Mr. Joseph. Seconded by Mr. Johnson. Discussion? None. All in favor? Roll call vote. Paul Joseph, aye. Mr. Johnson, aye. Carrie second of a chai. Peter Feldman, aye. John Marcy, aye. Unanimous. Thank you. And 5B, we are here to talk about a donation to the fire department from the Webster Dudley Lions Club. Chief and others. Get here for police, too. Okay. Evening, Chiefs. Good, yeah. it's all yours. Yeah. It's all yours. Identify. Right. Just let us know who you are, who you represent, and <clears throat> why we're here. Well, certainly. Uh, my name is uh, Stephen Bouchard. I am the current president slash King Lion of the Dudley Lions Club. Um, it is with a heavy heart that I do let the community know and the uh, Board of Selectmen know that the Lions Club, after 52 years of service, will be closing its doors. Um, effective June 30th um, it is unfortunate but times have changed and whatnot so in our essence to give back to the communities um, Lion Paul Driscoll approached uh, the fire chief um, and the police chief and to see what what they needed what the community needed um, they are both departments are one of the first in line to help the to help the community out the, from from our eyes so in the approach um, they listed off a few items that they would, would like and I'm here tonight to um, present the the donations to them so the uh, fire department approached us and we are giving them a donation to help with their hazardous waste and the gloves okay. and um, some of the gloves and shields that they were asked. Okay, okay keep continuing. Um, <clears throat> the police department asked um, asked for a donation of um, a projector, a couple of monitors for their dispatch center, and the remaining balance to be split between their dare program and the holiday gifts. So. Could you, if I may, before we continue, for the public, mm -hmm. number one, I'm really sad that the, the, the Lions Club will be closing its doors, but I'm also very grateful, and I would like to have you state the amounts that your uh, checks, I imagine, mm -hmm. that you're giving to each of the two departments. I don't remember. Be three thousand to the fire department and twenty five hundred to the police department. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you. No, thank you guys. Um, we we appreciate all the all the support in our in the past from from both the, the both of the departments. Um, one of the events that they have helped us mostly in the past that I first come to mind is our um, Halloween parade and party. Um, they provided fire trucks and 
police officers to help us help out and went all to the kids and nice little parade and party that we did so i we do appreciate it it was from the bottom of parts we do thank the community and thank all of you guys Mr. Chairman, thank you. It's, it, it is one thing where, again, it is bittersweet. Uh, we certainly thank the Lions Club for just thinking of us in this in this time. Uh, and it is sad to see an organization that's been so dedicated to the, the community uh, to go. But uh, it's just a it, it's a, uh, a real tip of the cap to the folks that are involved in that uh, association because this is the first thing they thought of once they were closing up was to give, uh, give back to the community. And they really have been doing that over the years. And I uh, can't thank them enough for everything they've done in the past and uh, certainly this generous donation right at the end. It's, it's greatly appreciated. Yeah, I'd like to also thank the Lions Club and uh, Mr. Driscoll for reaching out to me. He's in the audience over there. Thank you. Um, so ours was split. Um, as you know, uh, the board's been asking to find some money for the Hazardous Waste Day Fund. So $2,000 will go to that hazardous waste day. Um, I will call New England Disposal Technologies and um, set up a similar system to what we had before, $100 per resident. They'll just have to show their license when they go to Sutton and they can dispose of their hazardous materials till the money runs out. I think there's a small amount in the account now, but this would at least carry us through most of the summer, I would think. Um, and it, it's a good avenue for um, Dudley residents to get rid of their hazardous waste, mercury, paint, oil-based paints, things like that. Um, the other $1,000 was for hoods and gloves, uh, replacement hoods and gloves for the firefighters. Again, I'd like to thank you, and I'm sorry that you're closing your doors. It's too bad. Um, it's a good organization, did a lot for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Just, uh, just to add for, uh, for our end, we... Uh, as you know, we've been doing the firearms classes and different trainings and things at our station. So uh, one of the things we were looking to upgrade was a projector for PowerPoints and different things that we can use there. So that's money's going to help that. Also, we've been looking to replace the monitors in our in our dispatch center. Uh, they help not only with the uh, viewing cameras and things from around the station, but uh, help if we have prisoners and things of that nature. So uh, looking for a way to upgrade those. And then finally, the uh, the rest of the money split between the DARE program and the holiday drive. So the uh, the DARE program is completely funded through fundraisers, and Dean Popolski has been doing that program for over 20 years at the at the middle school, and I'm sure most of your kids had gone through it at one point or another. And so it's uh, tremendous to have that money going towards that program. <coughs> but then also, too, uh, one of the big things that we had talked about was in our holiday drive, gift cards were always important because we'll run into situations where maybe we don't have something that would meet a particular need for a, a child, or sometimes you have children that are a little older and uh, maybe they're you know, teenagers and some of the young kids' toys don't quite uh, make it. So these things will help out to uh, allow the parents to get the kids something that they're really interested in. So again, thank you to uh, again Mr. Driscoll for his work and to Mr. Bouchard for uh, and, and the rest of the group for all their their efforts and their work. Board, yeah, board members, Mr. Joseph. What's everybody going to do with their old eyeglasses now? <laughs> was, uh, that is a great that. question. Um, at this time, <coughs> um, we are coming up with a plan. Um, we believe um, there's going to be another club that will come in and um, take care of the eyeglasses. Um, but any Lions club that is around, so Oxford, Charlton, um, they both have Lions Clubs, and you can always reach out to them to um, give them your old eyeglasses as well. Thank you, Stephen. You're welcome. You're welcome. So I will I will present these to um to you guys. Um, if you guys need any pictures or whatever, I know yeah. uh, a couple of the uh, Lions Club members want some pictures. So absolutely, absolutely. Awesome. So let's get the big three up here. Yeah. 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 Actually, they do. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Catching people doing something good, right, Mr. Joseph? Yep, that's it. That's what I love doing. Yep. All right. We do not have any. Thank you again, Lions Club. Fantastic. Uh, we don't have old, old business, but we do have three public hearings in Section 7. <clears throat> I'm going to start off with the uh, first one. It is for an all alcohol liquor license for Whiskey Rocks. I will open the public meeting at 7.03 p.m. Is there anybody here? Um, Jessica Valby. Yeah, Jessica Valby, owner and manager, Whiskey Rocks, 414 Airport Road in Dudley. Hi. Yes, hi. Hi. So I'm sure you've all seen the application for the application. I printed we it have. here again for your reference. Um, as well attached is a full layout of the Thank interior you. of the space. Well done, by the way. Thank you. And a um, quick synopsis of what the concept will be. Um, just to give you a little introduction on myself, um, my name is Jessica Valby. Um, I currently own and operate Stave and Still, which is a full service restaurant in Webster, right on Main Street. We've been open just about a year, and according to many, I'm a glutton for punishment. So here we go again, we're looking to open another one. Um, the location will be 414 Airport Road in Dudley. Most people know this as Dudley Plaza, um, currently where Park and Shop is located. There's a vacant space that is 7,500 square feet. We have since signed a six-year lease with an additional four-year option on this space. Um, we are definitely committed <laughs> since we've signed 10 years to it. Um, so the concept <clears throat> uh, is called Whiskey Rocks. It is a full-service restaurant and bar. In addition to your traditional dining establishment, we will also have a full stage with concert sound and lights, a dance floor, a mechanical bowl, and three lanes of axe throwing. Um, Wait, did we, I hear axe throwing? Yes. <laughs> um, I have already um, spoken to our insurance provider, and he assures me that it will not be a problem. Oh, no, no, I'm excited. <laughs> Um, so we are looking to bring a full-service um, entertainment venue to the area. Um, and obviously, a full liquor license would facilitate that. Um, we, we're, we're currently operating another restaurant. We have um, full investment, um, and we are eyes wide open on what this entails. Um, and. If projections are correct, we will definitely bring not only the local um, demographic to town, but also draw in people from everywhere as far as Providence, Boston, Western Mass. Um, as my research has shown, there's absolutely nothing within a 100-mile radius of here of what we are doing. Question real quick, Mr. Joseph. Yes. I hear rumors that... Uh, <coughs> It'll be a, a country western music bar? Yes, country western. Uh, I don't know of any around anywhere. There is one in Auburn called Rascals, um, but they have bar, restaurant, line dancing. Um, I believe they operate Wednesday through Saturday. We would be open um, seven days a week, most likely for lunch as well. Um, in addition to the line dancing and the dining, we'd also have, like I had mentioned, the mechanical bowl and the axe throwing. So we're looking to do a full gamut of entertainment. 7,500 square feet is a good piece of property. Yes, it is. Yes, we have ample parking. Um, and the uh, property owner has assured me that he is going to repave that lot, which I know is a public, a um, little bit of a, an issue with potholes. Um, and I'm also, once I... It's baby steps, so once we have it repaved, I'd like to talk to him about putting in um, dividers 
in the lot um, and better lighting so that people don't dart from one side of the parking lot to the other that there's I don't I don't really know the exact phraseology the islands. Uh, I, yeah parking islands thank you yes now is, is uh, uh, whiskey rocks uh, is this going to be the first one or is that a franchise or what no, this is this is the first one it's completely independent um, I am the um, president of the corporation I will be the owner operator um, this is the only one we have no intention on franchising it good sounds like fun yeah I think so <laughs> except for the axe throwing well it's a skill so we can we can teach you okay better than it happening it still sounds like fun <laughs> <laughs> thank you Jessica anybody board no Perry I, I have a question about the axe throwing I'm look, <laughs> I, I, you know one of us had to I, I'm looking at the layout and I see tables I see dance floor I see a stage w where does the axe throwing happen so I apologize it's not labeled on this diagram but if you see um, to the top left there's the black square mm -hmm. and immediately to the right of that there's a, a, a box with two lines that says 13.5 feet those by, are the three by 21 feet yep. 21 feet across mm -hmm. yes and uh, 13 feet down those three uh, rectangles are the lanes of axe throwing okay so you know the obvious question well maybe not so obvious maybe that's what I was gonna go with we'll go with but you, the a, a question mm -hmm. would be in warmer weather since we're talking about axe throwing and a mechanical bull is that mechanical bull a male uh, yes, his name is Bucky. Okay. Um, <laughs> did you ever think of having some kind of modified lumberjack competitions in the parking lot? Um, I, I would absolutely have Sorry, to come before you once again and ask for a special permit to do an event in the parking lot, but that's special events out in the parking lot are definitely a, a consideration we've That had. would be cool. The whole, our whole idea is cool. Well, we are definitely doing the outdoor dining, so the, um, the medium shaded gray area to the outside is what we're calling our patio. Okay. It's actually a ten and a half foot space um, directly adjacent to the building. Um, and we're planning on um, somewhat barricading that in with planters to delineate the area that people are allowed to be um, with food and beverage. Um, and then we had spoken prior about putting safety, safety barriers just beyond that to prohibit cars from impeding on that space. Okay, hey, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Rota. Um, Ms. Ms. Valby came in and we met, we had the building inspector, I had the fire chief on the phone, we had the planner in the building and we kind of went over and, and you know, the Board of Health as well, we went over some of these requirements and requests in advance of the meeting to kind of talk through, for example, what the chief would want for a, he hasn't seen the final plan yet, but we had a discussion about what he would be looking to do in terms of um, fire lanes and fire access and so forth. Come on up, Dean. <laughs> Come on up. Please. Thank you. Hi. We just need a um, we just need a sprinkler review and a, um, with the building inspector and we need some kind of fire alarm plan too, which would be whoever your installer is. That's it. Currently the building is sprinkled. Yeah. Um, so once we get our building permit, we'll make sure we go through all of the proper protocols. Right, like if you you may have to make some changes though to where sprinkler heads are located if you're changing the interior layout of the building that's all uh, nothing interior is changing um, <coughs> it's the same footprint as it was prior um, so yeah we can absolutely look at that and make sure it's up to code okay thanks okay, my pleasure um, and just to kind of piggyback off of I'm sure the the, the bull in the room is uh, safety so um, because it it is a full alcohol license and we're bringing something a little bit different to town um, that may attract a little bit different demographic um, we do have a safety plan that we're implementing um, for the first month we will have um, not only private security on site Thursday Friday Saturdays um, but we are going to work with the local police to do um, security detail 
private detail to ensure that the community knows that they can come in it's a safe fun place to be as well as the people that are unsavory know that this is not a place where that type of behavior will be tolerated excellent I mean if you're going to ask serious questions I have one go ahead uh, right you will be the permittee yes have you or are you now uh, have you ever been a permittee for another alcohol license yes currently I hold one for Stavens still in Webster on Main Street okay have you ever had the mm -hmm. state remove or suspend your license as a permittee no sir I have not thank you okay. anybody else yeah I want to ask the police chief if he's okay with I mean the bull yeah but like you had said safety the axes I had a brief discussion uh, <clears throat> before the meeting and everything, so it went over a lot of things, and we can meet on it uh, further, but I really don't see any issues with it right now. The uh, the outdoor dining, is that in front of the, the building parking lot side? Yes, it is. Just, Okay. Yes. So it's, yeah, it's all going to be cordoned off, and if everybody right. else is fine, mm -hmm. well, that should be okay. But uh, we'll be meeting with her more as it uh, moves forward. Thank you, Chief. Mike, Mr. Johnson. You mentioned parking lot changes to help alleviate some of the issues. Uh, <clears throat> yes, yeah, so in the parking lot, or um, we've had I've had conversations with the building owner. Um, he he has agreed to repave the lot to fix some of the potholes that are there currently. They're more co closer to the street side, but they they are there in the lot. Um, and this may be a shock to him if he's watching this public hearing, but I do plan on addressing um, adding the parking islands with him to kind of um, slow traffic and direct traffic within the parking lot as well because it, it's currently it's not marked um, but for towards the parking shop side. So we, we definitely need to come up with some sort of traffic pattern in there if we're going to bring more vehicles to the, to the lot. It's a giant free-for-all, isn't it? It very much is, uh, yes. <laughs> right again, drives in and parks, yeah. And, yes. and a less, less serious <clears throat> question now. Uh, homemade mashed potatoes is that going to be at the uh, new place? yes they will definitely be on the menu and and yes we can accommodate like any request <laughs> well, to, he stole I know he stole my the question what kind of food he's, are you at, he's have? at our mashed potatoes <laughs> yeah. right, still sticking to his haven't, I haven't made it over there I'm yeah. going to it's on my list so <laughs> what kind of food will you have at, uh, at whiskey rocks um, it will still be an elevated type of cuisine um, but it will be more um, I don't want to say country oriented, but a little bit more casual. So burgers, but rather than, you know, 80, 20 chuck, it will be um, ground prime filet um, from Ed Stern's Dress Meats in Charlton. It's the beef Local. purveyor we use currently at our other restaurant. Local um, meat. I'm sorry. Local. Very local, like yes. We try and do everything local as well as seasonal. Um, it's, it's going to be similar to the menu we have now, but a, a, a little bit more moderately priced. Fantastic. I like it when somebody comes in here prepared. Yep. It's just an observation. That's a very good observation. Anybody in the audience here tonight have anything to speak on on this? Seeing none. Any board members, anything else? I, I can't tell you how many people have said, geez, I wish there was somewhere to go for dinner. Uh, uh, all you need to do is serve breakfast and you'll have everything. You know, I, I, you, I'm not that much of a glutton for punishment. <laughs> I was going to say, if you, if you make scrambled no. eggs, there's no, you can't get scrambled eggs in Dudley, as somebody once said. Well, we, well I guess we'll address that when, when it comes, but I, I, I do need to sleep a few hours. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I, I'm, this, again, we talk about like bringing, making things a destination, Dudley a destination, and this is certainly like right in the wheelhouse, and I'm glad you're here, but... Mr. Chairman, I would like to close. The, if, if nobody has anything else, I'll close the public hearing at 7.16 p.m. Go ahead, Mr. Joseph. Uh, I'd like to move that we grant an all alcohol liquor license to Whiskey Rocks 4 14 Airport Road, Dudley, Mass., and that the permittee will be the owner. Jessica Valvey. Second. Motion by Mr. Joseph, seconded by Mr. Johnson. Any other discussion? Mr. Sullivan, anything else? Oh, it's too late. You already closed it. We can do discussion. 
Uh, I got it. <laughs> Hearing none, all roll call vote. Paul Joseph, aye. Jay Johnson, aye. Stephen Sullivan, aye. Carrie Siganovichak. Tom Marcy, aye. Unanimous. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, gentlemen. Excited. Thank Good. you. Very exciting. All right. Thank you, sir. We get reset. <clears throat> and. Mr. Uh, yeah, Mr. Rota. Mr. Chairman, before we move on to 7B, I just want to. Ask for you, Michelle. Did we receive what you were waiting for for 7B? No, but I did get an email from Nelson saying that we can move forward with 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 the public hearing and thank you. Work with him on the plan. Okay. Mm. It's in the packet. Okay. Yeah, let me pull that up now. <clears throat> All right. Not been approved yet by Nelson. All right, so item 7B is another public hearing for a class two license, A and D, all automotive, all automotive repair and sales. I'm going to open that public hearing at 7.19 p.m. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Sullivan. What's going on? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear that. I know he spoke to the administrator. Oh, he didn't write this. Today about the missing documentation. What was the answer that Nelson gave? Um, Michelle. The missing documentation. There's a, Mr. Chairman. There's a. Um, it's a plan. We're waiting for a plan of the layout where the cars will be. If you look at the back of your packet for the hearing, the application is an email from <clears throat> um, Nelson, our building, our building inspector, zoning officer, that says, per our discussion, I have no objections to the Class Two license. I would like someone to show exactly where the cars will be displayed on site and that the size of the spaces meet nine foot by 20 foot requirements. So, Michelle spoke with Nelson, right? Mm -hmm. I think he's asking for, I think he's oh. saying he's not objecting specifically to the issuing of the license oh, pending his review and approval of the Ms. spaces. Mr. Sullivan. So the answer, so the answer was Nelson Recommends of proceeding despite the missing documentation. Right. Correct. I'm just going to say I'm going to say publicly I'm not comfortable with that. I, I, I appreciate Nelson's expertise from our question questioning rewarding the public hearing for a person that we contacted several times that, as Michelle I think said, did not respond. At first. I, I, I like I like to know how many times we called the person. Are they I like here? The I'd like to know how many times we contacted the person and got no response before we got a response before we reward the person with a public hearing to give them a license. <clears throat> Can I get that answer? You yes. know, well, yeah, Michelle, but, Michelle. Yeah. But, they, but they're here tonight, you said, right? How many? T oh, well, I, I tried, but I was using one email that was not, wasn't responding to that one, so they gave me another one. And then the telephone number was the same thing, so. We were just trying to communicate. Um, well, finally came in. Well, was it two times, three times, four times, one time? Two. Two. Well, I'm just, I'm just making my objection known. I know he's probably there. I'm just, okay. Yeah. Uh, he, I don't know. He's I don't here. Conditional approval okay. under different circumstances. When it are there is circumstances. For you to give me. Uh, conditional approval. I, I just not comfortable rewarding someone that didn't give the board a chance to review what he wants. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Um, sir, would you like to introduce yourself? And yeah, my question? name Ahmed Rifai, and uh, just bought this business, uh, Frank West Main Street. I just bought uh, my name. Speaking. Yeah, my name Ahmed Rifai. And uh, we just bought this business on June 1st. We started, and we are seeking for license to car sales. Now, you be sure to speak up, please. Yeah. And I'm tired. I've been working all day today, and I'm um, so... Get back. Just, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. When I speak, I speak loud then. Uh, so uh, I'm seeking for nine licenses, uh, like, uh, to, to allow us to sell cars for the building uh, okay and this is at uh, 5 West Main Street on Dudley yes which is former site of Arts Texaco so right. everybody knows He's going through the same blueprint as Arts had 
A question is: Is Danny Habib here also? No, he's uh, he's working. He's at the uh, let me say I'm to both of you. Uh, keep both back. of us. So I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. Okay. What do we do? I, Board member comments. May I say something, Mr. Chairman? You sure can, Mr. Secretary. Usually, with these permits, we yeah. have what you have here, and we also have an actual, like an assessor's picture of the lot with dimensions. Because I'm looking at this, and I see where you drew this. I see the four spaces. I, I yeah, I just see four of the nine spaces, and I see that that our building inspector wants them to be nine by twenty. But I don't know what size these are. I don't know where the other three are going. I don't know where the other I two are going. I didn't speak to the building inspector. I yeah. haven't spoken. Pre previously, to I know we've we've gotten diagrams, the assessor's diagrams with dimensions, and we can go by it. I I just don't have enough measurements in front of me to say. But they used to sell cars before. Okay, I, I heard I, like uh, that building. They had yeah, like. I, I don't have the previous permit. Yeah, you, you know. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Joseph, <clears throat> we don't have enough information to grant them a license now. We could say yes, but we don't have the diagram, which is the key. So I would ask, not by motion, but by direction from the chair, that. <clears throat> um, the town administrator talked to both uh, petitioners and tell them exactly what we need to make a good, quick, clear-cut decision. It's not a big deal. Okay. Where's, what town do you live in? Uh, Norwood. Yeah, you should move to Dudley. It's a I nice should. town. I, I like it. Yeah. Okay. By no means am I trying to discourage you from. No, no, no. 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 We we yeah. want business. Okay. It's just, yeah, we do. I got it. it yeah. It's just. So you need more uh, information yeah. about that. That's all. And he's Mid thinking about propane, and I. That's where I used to get my propane filled. So. Okay. So that's a. I'm just asking your direction. That I think. Uh, be done. I think let's let's make sure the eyes are dotted and the teeth. T's across like we always do. The board always make sure we have the right paperwork. Mr. Chairman, if we're going to go down that route, I'm happy to do it. But could I make a recommendation that we continue rather than to close? Absolutely. The Chair Lynch, Tina, motion. Yeah, it's a public hearing. Yep. We need right, a so I, I would move that. Uh, we're going to close the public. Yeah. We continue. Wait, do I have to close this one? Or no, he's continuing no. it. You're leaving no, it no. open. Yeah. We keep it open. Right. <clears throat> I'm going to move that we continue item 7B, a class 2 license for A&D all automotive repair and sales on 5 West Main Street, Dudley, uh, to our next scheduled meeting. Second. Motion by Mr. Joseph. Second by Mr. Siganevich. Roll call vote. Paul Joseph, aye. Kerry Siganovich, aye. Jay Johnson, aye. Keith Bell, aye. John Rice, yeah, <laughs> unanimous. Well, Alex, yeah, okay. Okay. All right. So, thanks. so thank you. Ne next, next, we'll, in, in, in two weeks, for two weeks, weeks? we'll, get, we'll okay. get everything all done. Thank you very much. <laughs> see you then. Thank thanks you. for coming. We'll see you soon. All right. Uh, Jonathan, do you want me to go ahead to read this for the next one? Um, okay, Mr. Ch uh, Mr. Chairman. In your packets for this uh, nuisance dog hearing. Well, let me, it, just for everybody, this is item 7C. It's a nuisance dog hearing for Mrs. Mrs. Chelsea Doran at 10 Lynn Lane. Mr. Bruda. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, what I'd like to ask you to follow, we've gone through this a few times before, is the, on the top of everyone's packet, uh, it says dangerous dog public hearing. This is a nuisance dog public hearing, but the procedure is the same. So as we open the hearing and the board is asked to evaluate the situation and make a finding as to whether A, it's a nuisance dog or B, it is not a nuisance dog situation and then make any recommendations on orders that they may want to send to the, uh, to the owner, I'd ask the chair that you strictly follow this checklist 
uh, which would be Michelle will swear that the, anyone, anyone, uh, any witnesses in uh, that, that speak. Um, the deputy ACO is here tonight. The ACO was forced into work at the last minute. And she's not able to attend, but the assistant can certainly, mm -hmm. Mr. Fitzgerald can speak <clears throat> intelligently on the matter. Um, start off with the complainant and any of the complainant's witnesses. The chair does recognizes who's going to speak and who isn't going to speak. In other words, it doesn't de devolve into something we don't want it to. Um, everyone goes through the chair when they speak. Um, either side may ask questions of the other after the selectmen have completed their questioning. Each side will be given the opportunity to present rebuttals or concluding remarks. Then when the hearing is officially closed, Mr. Chairman, no more remarks from either side will be allowed. No more what? No more remarks from either side after the hearing is closed will be allowed. Uh, the board will deliberate in open session as the finding of fact. That's all we're doing is doing a fact finding. Yes, it's a nuisance dog. No, it is not. And any orders that may follow, the board will take a decision. Will make a decision as to the action that will be taken. And uh, Michelle and I will produce an order and ask that that be delivered to the dog owner based on the hearing tonight. And, and did you say, mention, because I can't always hear you, um, did you mention in your statements that uh, that no one who speaks during this particular hearing uh, is to address any comments directly to another, but only to the chair and through the chair to someone else who's going on who has spoken. Correct. All right, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. Yep, thank you. And with that preamble, we will open this public hearing at 7.29 p.m. Mr. Chairman, I, we should begin with the animal control, the assistant animal control officer who will speak to his knowledge of the situation and give you an overview as to what's in your packets. Thanks. Mr. Fitzgerald, how are you doing? Are all uh, people who are going to speak be sworn in? Yeah, Michelle will swear him in. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Good evening, gentlemen. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks for coming in. Can you hear me, Mr. Sullivan? Yeah, make like the, the microphone's your friend. <laughs> okay, uh, so for the record, um, we're here to discuss the two dogs uh, residing at Ten Lin Lane. I believe their names are Jet and Bella. Um, uh, the two dogs that were residing at Ten Lin Lane, I believe their names are uh, Jet and Bella, who have been running at large uh, in the neighborhood for almost two years. Uh, during this time, it has been reported that they have chased or scared um, children in the neighborhood, uh, the mailman. Uh, also, there are elderly homeowners in the neighborhood that uh, have been afraid to leave their homes uh, in fear of being chased or, or knocked over. Some of them have uh, walkers or canes. Um, mail delivery has even been suspended to some homes around Ten Lin Lane uh, due to this problem. Uh, the owner of the dogs has been fined multiple times, and the situation continues to this day, seems to be increasing as well. Uh, which brings us to this, this meeting here. Um, we are hoping the board can come to some resolution uh, before it escalates into a dog bite. In your packet, among other things, you will see three letters, two specifically from neighbors, and one specifically from uh, the post office itself, along with all the copies of the citations, and I believe there are some videos out there for you as well. I'm not sure if you reviewed them yet. Mr. Chairman, if the board wants to see the videos, if you give me the word, I can yes, please. go through those. And uh, as Mr. Fitzgerald mentioned, also in your packet, there's a letter from uh, the town clerk that the dog needs to be seen. 
Letter from the town clerk, what? Letter from the town clerk for unlicensed. Yes, they they're currently unlicensed? unlicensed. Both of them? Currently unlicensed, correct. <coughs> I believe there are outstanding uh, citation fees as well as of, uh, no, as of now are $440. How much? Four hundred and forty dollars outstanding. Unpaid. Unpaid. Okay. So here we go. There's uh, four or five videos. I'm just going to show what I have, Mr. Chairman. And what? Which? Which house is this, Mr. Ruda? Can someone or both of you work together and describe what we're seeing? I'm not sure what's on which no, 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 video. No, which house, like where, what house is this? Is this, this 10 Lynn Lane? Believe, across the street. Yes, I believe 10 Lynn Lane, Lane is, is the, the blue, blue house. house. Split, right? Okay. Thank you. And uh, I've w one or both dogs, there we go. Oh. Where were the dogs in that first clip? So they were in the yard of 10 Lynn Lane. Supposedly there's an electric fence with, with um, collars that is not operational. Okay, thank you. On the technical operator here, Mr. Chairman, this appears to be the mail truck video. What's that, Johnson? The mail, mail, the mail delivery video. He can't get out of his truck. Let me know if at any time the dogs leave the owner's property. It ran, around the spot the it. it ran around the truck into the street, Paul. Yeah, both videos that you just saw, they left the property. Okay. So the mail, mail carrier was not able to get out, is what I just saw, right? Correct. Oh, boy. Mr. Damon. Mr. Sullivan. I, I don't believe... I was, I was emailed a video from a ring doorbell camera that said was uh, denoted as uh, video number three. I did not receive video of the other two. Could you just give me a brief description of what you folks just seen? Because all I could hear was barking and something about the post office and something about a truck. Sure, I'll give you the, the first video uh, was a uh, child who left the house directly across from Ten Lynn Lane on his scooter. And as soon as he got into the road, he was chased by look like the brown dog um, to the point that he got, left his scooter and ran to his house. It, is this a different home that we're looking at now? Uh, well, a hold. different vantage point? It appears to be. Oh, yes. Hold on. In the second video? Uh, in the second video was uh, the mail carrier pulling up to Tenlin Lane um, and the, he, the dogs were attacking his uh, vehicle and he left the scene. Thank you. You get that, Sully? Okay, now yeah. we're going, This is this video three now? This is not a video, this oh. is still shot, I believe, Mr. Chairman, but Mr. Joseph asked about the dog being off the property. And yeah, you can see it. Even I can see that. <coughs> uh, well, it's the mail truck. <coughs> I mean, I'm missing any, uh, um, yeah, there's another one with bringing the trash out, right? Yep. This might be the, no, it's not that.
Just another shot of it off the property, Mr. Chairman. I see. Paul? Yeah. Steve, this is a video of a dog in the street parking. That might be it, Mr. Chairman. Check one more thing in that. I think we'll be <coughs> That's it. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you guys for showing that. Rob, any 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 other color? That's pretty much that's pretty much the gist of it. I mean, uh, over we do have in your packet the number of citations that were given and the dates, the amounts. And again, there's uh, 440 uh, outstanding at this time. So, are the uh, $420 fines? Is that a current outstanding fines? Is that a current outstanding balance? Correct. And For both dogs. I'm sorry. For both dogs. Thank you. And is that <laughs> primarily for not being licensed? Uh, no, most of it is for running at large from what I see on this uh, list. Okay. There, are some, there are some fines for, running, uh, for not being licensed as well. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan. I'm not sure if it's appropriate at this time, but the person that was issued the fine, have they not paid them because they're appealing them? Have they not paid them because they choose not to? And have they not paid them despite the fact we checked the so on June 9th they were told they were coming to the town hall and they still didn't square up their account in the last 20 whatever it is, 18 days or 16 days or six days. Uh, I just want to I get three questions. Maybe when they're up there, I'm not sure. Are they, are they appealing him and not paying? <coughs> Have they decided they just didn't want to pay them? And did they not pay them even though they know they were coming in? According to this letter here, it was dated June 9th. Stephen? 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 What? Are you asking Robert the question if he knows why yeah. they have not paid the fines? Oh, that's what I said. That's what I just said to Mr. No, you can ask Robert. It's perfectly all right if you ask Robert if he knows why they haven't paid the fines. Uh, I do not know why they haven't paid the fines, but I do know that uh, there's a certain uh, amount of time, and if they don't, it goes to the court, and then there's a hearing with the court. What do we get? Thank you. Say? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, wait. Well, no, that didn't answer my question. Mr. I would like to know from the person who received the fine. Why was it How about that? I'll just simplify it. I'll eliminate three questions down to one. How come there's an outstanding balance on the fine? Later. Comes, <laughs> later. Oh, comes later when they come up. Yeah. OK. I think we can ask that maybe if, if they're here. Stephen. OK. Um, so that, so that, what, that what I threw up there, there and I, 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 I'm actually not sure. Is do you guys know if the uh, Miss Chelsea Doran is here tonight? Oh, so she probably won't be able to answer that question. She's not here tonight, <coughs> but the neighbors are. Mr. Chairman Mr. and Mr. Ruda. I can't answer Mr. Sullivan's question. I can tell you that we we have not received any fine appeal as the hearing officer. I can tell you that we have not received any sort of appeal on any of the fines. Um, the accounts as of this afternoon, nothing has been paid or settled and or license obtained. And uh, Mrs. Doran was served, wasn't served, she received a registered mail for which she's, she signed for. When? And sent a certified letter, return receipt requested, which we received back, uh, notifying her of this hearing and asking her to appear. 
on June 9th. Do we know what kind of dogs? Do we know what kind of dogs these are, Rob? How big they are? Um, it's not specified here, but uh, well, yeah, I take that back. Uh, there's uh, Jet is a Russell mix, Jack Russell mix, and uh, Bella is an Australian Shepherd mix. So smaller dogs. Okay. Thank you. Just so public people at home can know what what, what kind of dogs we're talking about. So one of the things we have to okay. Mm -hmm. What's that? When we make our determination, there's some disqualifying things that we're, we're fine. Okay. Well, I wanted to open up to public hearing. Um, neighbors? Yeah, can, can Robert just slide over and sit in that? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Rob, stay at the end. So can, just, sir. In case we need to bring him back up quickly. Would anybody like to come up and add testimony to this hearing? Be shy. We did have some videos, but it's nice to hear from the neighbors as well. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, um, all right. I, um, I didn't see him coming up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, come on, David. Yeah, seat in, fr in front of the microphone so Mr. Sure. Sullivan and, and the people at home can hear you. You've got to be sworn in. Yeah, we have sworn Hi, um, David Jankowski. Jankowski? Yeah. And do you swear to tell the truth and know the truth and nothing but the truth? Yep. Absolutely. And what address do you live at? Um, I currently reside at 7 Camelot Circle in Dudley, but I was staying at, well, I wasn't staying at, I was over at my mother's house because um, we were using the pool with my wife and my son. Um, okay, don't be afraid to speak up. <clears throat> Sorry. You got some old folks on this board, you know. <laughs> yeah, none of that and uh, not very good at pu public speaking. Thank you. So. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so while we were in the pool area, uh, basically the dogs, we don't have any video of it, but basically my son was getting out of the pool area. The two dogs approached the back side of my mother's house, not the house that's adjacent to Nine Lane Lane. Uh, so it's not visible from their house. The dogs literally ran around my mother's entire house to the pool area. Basically my son was walking out from <clears throat> the uh, from the gate. Luckily my wife was up at the top so she was watching him as well uh, I put myself in between myself and the dogs as the two dogs were approaching my son barking barking at him and I basically just waved my hands and started yelling at him and basically they started backing up and I basically I didn't really chase him but basically just pushed him all the way to back to their house and then basically I tried knocking on the door didn't hear anything um, but Basically, I was clearly upset. <laughs> um, so I tried knocking on the door, ringing the doorbell. Nobody answered. Um, that was the one that also sent the email uh, with a detailed description of exactly what happened. Um, but basically, once I hear that, as well as all the issues that my mother was having as well, it's, <coughs> I, I didn't mean to be that forward with the email. I don't know if it was seemed... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I was speaking a little, a little emotion with it too. <laughs> Understandable. Okay, no, thanks for that. Any questions? I'll let Paul go first. Paul, sorry. Um, <clears throat> it's the yard you're referring to with the pool. Yeah. That's not your house. It's your folks' house. It's my mother's house, Eleven Lynn Lane. I'm sorry. It's my mother's house, Eleven Lynn Lane. Okay. Is that enclosed by a fence? Yes, it is. And there was a single gate to that? There's two gates. There's one side on Nineland Lane, and there's one that's directly to the backyard. Okay. Did the dogs at any time go through either one of those entrances into the yard? No, I didn't allow them. Okay. Did the dogs growl at you at any time or snap at yes, you? Yes, they did. They, didn't, they, they did not try to attack me, but I, basically if my son was there all by himself, and luckily I was right behind him, I don't know because the dogs are bigger than him. How old is your son? Four years old. Okay, thank you. Okay, Kerry? Um, obviously he was afraid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, this house is across the street from the house that... Not directly was. across, but it's basically right across the street where you saw the videos from. Uh, that's Nine Lane Lane. The house that's directly to the left of it. 
That's what I'm saying. This is it's not an abutting. No, no, it's across the street. They had to cross the street. They had to cross the street, side. go through the front yard to the side yard to the backyard to the pool. Okay. Did did anyone get hurt? No. From the animals. Okay. Not not to diminish. It's just no 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 no. 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 Understood. Oh, yeah. Four years old. I'm good, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Anybody else? Pauline, Pauline, please. Pauline Jankowski. Mm -hmm. And do you swear to tell the truth, the old truth, and nothing but? I do. Thank you. I don't know where to begin. So when, I, when their dogs are out and I want to go to the, my mailbox, I have to drive my car in from my driveway to my mailbox. If I come home and they are out, I have to definitely drive my car into the garage and shut the door to unload my groceries. If I want to go work in my yard, I have to make sure they're around. And if I do, I, I take something with me, like a shovel or you know something to protect myself because they will come chasing after me. I have a video of them just this week in my driveway barking their heads off at me. And I was trying to get to my car to, to get my groceries. So it's like, I'm afraid to go out at night. I, I, I sometimes can't get my mail. It's, it's a, a real nuisance, you know? And I don't want to fall because I'm 70 or one years old and my neighbors are old and it's just scary. Have they ever commit, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Um, have they ever entered your yard? Always. Oh, always in my yard. I guess they cross my, I have a 190 foot frontage, and they, according to my neighbor, they go on the, my second lot, I call it my second lot, and they go to the street behind, behind me. So I, they must be terrorizing those people too. Well, let's not assume that. Let's but I don't know. Let's just stick with the facts that we know. So have you ever seen them in your yard yes and how did they act towards you they're very when, oh. when you confronted them in your yard the, they get kind of they're aggressively barking at me and you have to like really like threaten them for them to try to leave you know what, what I mean or I go in the house because I'm just not going to deal with them what does that mean, threaten them to get them to leave? You know, just yell and like wave something or, you know, I'm not going to chase them, <laughs> you okay. know, just to try to give me some space to get back into my house. Okay. And have you ever noticed if the owners were ever outside at the time that the dogs crossed the street into your yard? Not no, before? they never were. You never saw them? No. Okay. 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 Mr. Johnson? Any interactions with the uh, the owners of the dogs? Not really. She's not she doesn't very she's not very social. You know. And I can't go over there to talk because if she's outside her dogs are with her. So how am I gonna go and talk to her? Her dogs are like, you know, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a chicken. Sorry. I understand. Just a second, so. You're not a chicken. <laughs> You're fine. So th there's no leashes. There's no outdoor fencing. No. There's so basically they're roaming free. There's yes. nothing to contain them at all. No. They used to be contained, but they with the electric fence. But I don't know if the electric <clears throat> fence doesn't work anymore or what. But they they're all over the place now. Okay. So. And, and the owner's aware that they're. I'm sure that she is because she's yelled at them to come back into I, her yard, uh, I, you know, like, but they weren't in my yard when she was yelling at them to come I'm just back. Saying, this isn't a once or twice, oh, I left the door open by mistake and they got No. Out. How many times would you say this has happened? Is this an every day, most days? At least a couple times a week. A couple times a week. Yeah, I, I have a video of them just this week in my driveway barking at me. I, I'm just trying to establish, get things on the yeah, record. this is not just a once in a you know like 
if my neighbor next door's dog gets loose, it's just because the kid let the dog out, and he's not. The dog's not going to do anything to us. But they're out all the time, and you know. And if they're she's gone, they'll bark for hours at night, too. So it's like this is multiple problems. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Thank you. Mr. Jankowski. Thank you, Stephen. Any any anything from you? <clears throat> Uh, I'm not sure who the person was, but the person directly across. And the gentleman was getting his trap in front of us. Everybody else see that video? Okay. And the young child came out in the front yard. Yeah, two dogs. That was the video I watched a couple of times. Definitely was trying to charge across the road. And yep. I see what the uh, lady just spoke. Characterization of like, you've got to. We've all been in that situation, but the person, the gentleman, had a really step in front of his son. I think if he was in his garage, and I don't know if these dogs have ever bitten anybody, but it certainly appeared that that was, was a definite outcome that could have happened. Yep. No, yeah, the, the, the boy definitely, like, knew, dropped his scooter and ran, yeah. <clears throat> okay, we have someone else coming up, Steve. Oh, I'm Carolyn Foster. Foster. Carolyn Foster, and will you swear to tell the truth? I do. And you have my letter in front of you, I believe, that I sent to the dog officer. And that has quite a few incidents that I've observed, because you're talking about has, have people observed them directly. And yes, I have observed the things directly. And we didn't get our mail for a week, because, uh, which was a nuisance. We had to go down to Webster and pick it up at the post office. Uh, because the uh, postmistress there was afraid for her mailman. Uh, and I told you in the I'm not. You were supposed to get a copy of that letter before. I told you in the letter that the, uh, when we went down to get it, I spoke to both the postmistress and the mailman, and the mailman said that, I said, I've seen you throwing out the food to them before you get down to Barbara Stanley's. Barbara Stanley lives, we live on the end of Lynn Lane on the right side, which is 14 Lynn Lane, 12 Lynn Lane in between us. And, uh, the dogs were contained for a period of time because they had that electric fence in, but apparently the dogs discovered that where they were put in up near the house, they could also get out and get into the driveway. So when um, both my husband and I uh, are close to 80, and, um, and I have uh, damage to the sciatic nerve in my leg due to a car door slamming on it this winter, so I've got trouble with uh, you know keeping balance sometimes and uh and pain and i have i have a pinched nerve in my spine so i try to walk up the street it's you know probably a quarter of a mile to the top of the street and i try to walk up to mason road every day well i've had to stop walking because once those dogs decided that they could get out they come out and swarm you when you get there they go around you barking and come very close i take my my walking stick and i threaten them with it and the um uh, the brown, uh, the white dog will go away a little bit, but the brown dog comes, and then the the, uh, the white dog will follow it. And you say they are small dogs, but I'd say they were probably uh, close to 50 pounds, so I'd consider that a medium-sized dog. And they snap, but I have not been bitten. I'm diabetic. I wouldn't want to be bitten. And my husband has a heart condition and has had chemotherapy, so he's not too steady on his feet, too. A fall for us could put us in the, in the hospital or in a nursing home. So this is very dangerous. And I've seen him, and you'll see on my note there, the people at the end of the street have two lovely daughters, and the dogs have chased them on their bicycle and run beside them and then run out even in front of them, chase beside them like they were going to bite them, and then run right in front of the bicycle. We still had the sand on the hill, and they hadn't come around and taken the sand away. That was a very dangerous accident. could have happened. And when I was down to the post office, I did talk to the mailman down there, and I said, I've seen you throwing out the food be when you get to, uh, before you get to Barbara Stanley's because first they, he has to stop and leave mail there, and he throws food out there so they won't bite him. Because uh, the dogs are jumping, barking, and, and he said the uh, brown dog, not the white dog, was snapping at him when he put his hand out to put the mail in the mailbox. And Barbara Stanley has a mailbox that's fallen over, so it's hard to get the mail in her mailbox. 
So this mailman was, uh, and then they would run out right out in front of him, wonder they didn't get run over, but he was jamming the brakes on. Could have been a good accident with that, too. So the dogs are dangerous. And um, the, I saw the woman, she tried to walk dogs. Cause to me, these, these dogs are in, in deficit here, it's the owner. Uh, I, people that don't walk their dogs, have them all cooped up and everything, uh, they're gonna be wild. And so I saw her one day, she tried to, I don't, I don't know what the problem is there, but she tried to walk the dog. She had a little, she has about a four-year-old that looks like a two-year-old. She had him in tow, and she had the two dogs that had never walked on a leash before on long leashes. Two, can you imagine uh, taking a toddler out and two dogs that have never been walked on a leash before? So this, these dogs are uh, a real danger, and the people know. The people know, and apparently they go away you know, because uh, people have tried to get, who's gonna go over to their house though to knock on their door when you, when you walk by their house? I walk on the opposite side of the road because I'm afraid the dogs are gonna come out and swarm me and either knock me over or bite me. And so nobody's gonna go to the door there. The delivery men just sort of throw things at the house and tear away as quickly as they can, you know. They're a danger. And um, so anyway, I don't know if there's any questions you have about, uh, or if my letter is incomplete in any way, but I have uh, witnessed the uh, dogs. They come in my yard, but most of all, they go in Pauline Janikowski's yard across the street, and they go all around her house, but they go to the right of the house on her lot, and they go down and back. I think there are dogs on the next street. You hear a lot of barking over there. They must be causing a big commotion over there. And then they're gone for like an hour or two sometimes, so I think there's problems over there, and they don't know where the dogs come from. Mm -hmm. So, any questions for Mrs. Foster? So I think that my uh, letter will uh, fill in any details you have, but I'd be glad to answer. Very detailed that. account. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Somebody broke the ice. Now it's a little easier. Okay. Miranda Devo. Miranda Devo. Okay. Miranda, do you swear to tell the truth, all truth? Yes. So those videos came from my ring camera and that was my son that got knocked off the scooter. It's not the first time it's happened. I have three kids. One of them is almost three. My older one's almost 12 and my daughter's six. Ne not one of them will go outside without first telling me to check the front yard. And actually it was three days ago, my son, we have a batting cage on the side of our house and he left his batting gloves on the ground. He ran over to get the batting gloves off the ground in my yard, and from down the street, the dogs come running up, like aggressively barking, and he starts running away screaming, Dad, 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 because my husband was outside. So it's just, it's really sad that, you know, we can't just play outside with our kids. And I have had interaction with her, and she just seems to be absolutely clueless to why people are calling or why the dog <coughs> officer shows up at her house. She screams at the dog officer, and I feel terrible every time I have to call her. Screams, screams at her, swears at her. It's like she has no clue as to what's going on. She's like, they're just, they just want to play. They, they just want to play. They're nice dogs. I'm like, well, they can't be chasing my kids. Like... So my husband's also spoken to her too, not so nicely, but. Okay, any questions for Mrs. DeVoe? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for the videos as well. It's going to be tough one. You're going to have to get close to that mic. I don't have a lot to add. The dogs are very aggressive. I live next door to the two dogs. When I go out, and before my husband died and he went out, they would very aggressively run to the borderline between the two houses. I think at that point, the electric fence worked. But then they got very smart and they realized it didn't go all the way back. So there were hedges between the houses, but they would run behind the house 
and come into our yard, and if we were out, they'd aggressively come at us. So we have complained, but I know that you're doing as much as you can do, but it's, it's frightening. Okay. Any questions for Mrs. Zagowski? Thank you, Hannah. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? I want to make sure everybody feels like they've been heard. Okay. That's it. All right. So you said there was some circumstances earlier that we have to take into consideration or um, I just wanted to no I think we covered it mr. Chairman. okay I just I want to be clear that we did give notice to the um, dog owners of this hearing tonight and I think part of the issue is that there's been that the donor simply has been non-responsive to the, anything the town has asked Right. Uh, asked cite, issued citations issued fines issued warnings police have been involved ACO has been there multiple times and she's been served notice of this hearing as well Paul I've got a question for Robert and then I want to ask a question of all of the witnesses who are here uh, as a group oh. Oh, yeah. <coughs> all right Robert, um, have you had personal, direct, one-to-one -one conversations with the owners? I personally have not, but I've gotten the story after Jen has come back, and she's very combative, um, swearing at her every time she goes there to, even, even in the beginning when she was just taking the dogs to the shelter, and then she would have to come and pay the fine and release the dog. Even then, she was very combative at that time. So every interaction is is not not good. She's not a very polite person. Yeah, a couple of the comments, uh, three comments, but two from one lady um, who said that the, and I know it's, it's hearsay, but if we're going to pursue this further, which I think we, we need to, um, you know, telling a complainant to relax, you know, uh, to be very dismissive of someone who took the time, obviously, to uh, write us a letter. Let me ask the, the, the group as a whole, is there anyone here, any neighbor here, who believes that the dog or dogs got close enough to them to bite them? To my son. If so, just raise your hands. Okay, Chair. that's a good number. Not a dangerous dog. All right. Yeah. Um, did any of them nip no, at no, your no. clothing or your feet? Mine to my son. Okay. <clears throat> My daughters, when they ride their bikes up the road, the dog will chase them and try to grab their hand. Should be, though. Okay. <laughs> There's no problem. So, so the question then becomes, <laughs> by show of hands, is do any of you believe that the dogs got close enough to bite you or that they were not close enough? Let's take it together uh, separately. How many of you believe the dogs were close enough to bite you? How many of you believe the dogs were not at any time close enough to bite you? Okay, thank you all. So what we got is a situation of a, a nuisance dog right. that we may not be able to characterize as a dangerous dog. Right. But a nuisance dog can be worse than a dangerous dog. Dangerous dog bites somebody, see you later, pal. A nuisance dog or dogs simply continues 
to obstruct or inhibit the peacefulness of the neighborhood for other for all those who don't own those dots and that can just nag on to the point where it becomes more aggravating than a dangerous dog so we need and uh, we need to do something we do but <clears throat> I think for at the public hearing still open before we decide like what to do town administrator do we you recommend more discussion or do we close it and we deliberate on what to do next I think if everybody feels that they've been heard then we should go ahead and close it okay <clears throat> and I'm happy to provide the board with um, the action we took at the last uh, nuisance dog hearing that we had okay well with that I will close this public hearing at 8.09 yeah. Mr. Ruta. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Chairman, we had a we had a dangerous dog hearing, which was reduced to a nuisance dog hearing uh, after town council was consulted. I don't know a year or two ago, and the family in the minutes reflect that the family was to keep. So there were two things we were being asked to do here. First is to declare the dog a nuisance or not, depending on what the board votes, and second to offer and I'll read it directly. Um, okay, if the hearing authority deems a dog a nuisance dog, the hearing authority may further order that the owner or keeper of the dog take remedial action to amel ameliorate the cause of the nuisance behavior. And we answered that the last time we had, and of course it's a different circumstance, but I'm just trying to give yep. the board an overview of how we did it. We answered that by saying in the minutes, the family was to keep total control of the dog at all times and the dog was not allowed to run free outdoors at any time without him wearing an electric shock collar and a manually controlled training collar along with an installation of an aerial run in the backyard. That was specific to that case, but that's the sort of action that we took and then we committed it to the form of a order um, and it was delivered by the ACO and a police officer I believe to the to the dog owner and they have 10 days to appeal that so two things declare a nuisance or not and then any sort of further orders that the board wants to take and there's a broad scope of, of authority in terms of issuing an order it's unfortunate to the that the owner didn't respond mr. chairman because we could try to work with the owner to come to some happy resolution right but, Mr. Sekinovich. Would you like a motion? We're at that point. <clears throat> I, I make a motion that we declare. Do we need the names of the dogs? Yeah, for the record. Uh, dogs, yeah. Bella and Jet. Bella and Jet. I make a motion that we declare Bella and Jet of Ten Lin Lane a nuisance. Nuisance dogs. Nuisance dogs. Motion by Mr. Siganevich. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Joseph. Discussion? Mr. Mr. Johnson. Uh, so I've read General Law Part 1, Title 20, Chapter 140, Section 157 several times now while I was listening to the, uh, uh, the discussion. And I agree with the determination that the dog is a nuisance. Um, whether or not we can prove dangerous, I don't think we're there. So I would agree with the, the motion to, to, that these dogs are, are a nuisance. Thank you. Mr. Sullivan? I'm good. Paul? Okay. All right, we'll call that to a vote. Roll call vote, please. Kerry Siganovich, aye. Paul Joseph, aye. Jay Johnson, aye. Stephen Sullivan, aye. John Marcy, aye. Unanimous. <clears throat> All right, now we need to order uh, 
a remedy. some action by the mm -hmm. dog's owners that clearly tells them what we what they need to do and what <coughs> options will be available to the town if they fail to do it so JJ can you just give us those things in order so I think mr. chairman to mr. Joseph what we had I spoke with the ACO um, this afternoon and she seemed uh, like you was she was pretty much on the same page as what we did last time in terms of a, a humane restraint meaning that it would be a run or a lead that's tied outside that doesn't it's not just simply a rope around the tree. It's it's a you call it a humane restraint, meaning that dogs can't run around and strangle themselves and that sort of thing or a fence. Yeah, if, if I may, she did uh, tie the dogs at one point to a tree, to which we had to go over and pretty much rescue the dogs because they were almost suffocated. They had wrapped themselves around, so it's going to be more of a a run, An aerial run. So the key in the letter that I'm assuming. <coughs> That you, the, the town administrator, and you, Robert, will get together the right. Will will get together. That uh, key phrases among them will be that they humanely restrain both animals. Correct. Okay. Now, what do we do? We is there anything else we want them to do? How about paying their fines? How about we put something in there if they don't pay their fines? There's got to be a punitive action. There can't be more fines if they ignore them. So I think fines have a punitive action attached to them for not paying them. Well, Sully, they haven't paid their first 420 bucks. In order to license the dog, which you which should compel them to do, they need to bring all those fines up to date as well. So, Mr. Chairman, what's, what's the town's recourse <clears throat> when, they, when they ignore fines? A violation? Uh, at one point, they weren't licensed, although according to the documentation provided, they are now. So, what what is the town's recourse if these people continue not to pay a fine? Can we take them to court, Robert? I believe uh, when fines are issued, a formal citation, and that uh, has a certain amount of time, whether it be 120 days, I'm not sure exactly, um, then it goes to a, uh, a, a case at uh, Dudley District's court to where the magistrate can, if it's significant, can issue uh, arrest warrants. So would we be wise, uh, Mr. Chairman, would we be wise, uh, could you to the uh, town administrator, to use some obtuse legal language saying that the uh, town will, will pursue if they don't pay these fines and follow the lease laws that the town will pursue appropriate legal action mr. chairman if, if we look at okay. if we look at our packets there's a letter to the clerk magistrate the Dublin yep. district court from the town clerk uh, advising them that uh, on May 4th, the Dudley Animal Control Officer issued notice of violation to Chelsea Duran at 10 Lynn Lane. As of this date, June 7th, the above named individuals paid the pay, pay the the violation fee of $100 uh, per dog, failing to license. So I think that the town clerk's office. I think we have two issues. One is unlicensed. One is nuisance dog. I think the town clerk is doing a good job of already being on top of getting the dog licensed. In order to license your dog, you have to pay off all your fines in full. Okay. So as the ACO issues the fines and they fail to get paid, it won't make a difference because in order to get the licenses, you have to be paid up in full. So I think we're kind of on the right track in terms of enforcing the fines being paid okay. in pursuing the court. So Mr. Jim, is there anything we need to do? Um, Mr. Second, I already had something. I, I think as far as uh, restri uh, restrictions, restraints, what have you, presently the animals already have an electronic collar, the invisible fence, and we, we've still got this issue. 
I, I'd like to see them physically restrained if they're outside, meaning either either a leash or a run. I I I, I don't think the electronic thing would uh, would work. It's not working now. What makes us think it's going to work in the future? And the fact that the individual isn't even here to speak with us to come together with something. I'd like to see either the the run instead of the run around or leashed. So do you want to say outside at all times? Do you want to say uh, through Mr. Chairman? Oh, Gary, do you want to say humanely, physically restrained? It, is there a legalese, whatever your profession calls it? Do you know what I'm trying to say? I mean, humanely restrained. Um, physically, you might go into. <clears throat> Another realm there. Um, I, I mean, a leash in the run. I yeah, say. a leash. I mean, a, yeah, a runner. Yeah, exactly. So we could we put that in? I don't care. I just want physically in there somewhere. Yes. Clearly understood. Well, there's Mr. Johnson just passed this to me that as part of the uh, general laws <clears throat> that the dog, well, the hearing authority deems the dog. Oh, this is for dangerous though, not for. But that's the language. That, yeah, go ahead and read it. That the dog be humanely restrained, provided, however, that no order shall provide that a dog deemed dangerous in this case. So you could take that out. So that the dog be humanely restrained, provided, however, that no order shall provide that the dog be chained, tethered, or otherwise tied to an inanimate object, including but not limited to a tree, post, or building. So that's the, that's the language of how to define humanely restrained. So if something like that, I think it's yeah. about, about how specific yeah, we I, want to be. You you need to working off what Jay just cited, along with Robert, need to come up with the right language that makes it clear. You're mainly and physically restrained, and that the town will take appropriate legal action post haste if they don't follow the laws and let them figure out what post haste means. So my recommendation, Mr. Chairman, is they have 10 days to appeal the order to the to the uh, district court. So I would give them a 10 day 11 uh, 10 day deadline to comply with the order. Okay. And then then we would take it up if they haven't complied with the order then good take it up another notch. Okay? Good. Jay What's the definition of up another notch? Well, then it becomes a, a matter of issuing thousand dollar fine, bring it to the to, to the uh, clerk magistrate of the courthouse to, to issue an order, and failure to comply with that order would not come would result in a warrant, and it would result in a uh, contempt of court charge, and it would escalate from there. But oh, I don't think everybody wants that. Nope. Okay, what's the board's pleasure? I would ask just simply that uh, you ask for unanimous consent that the uh, <clears throat> town administrator and the animal control officer and assistant animal control mm -hmm. officer uh, take action um, uh, consistent with our discussion here this evening. Do we need a motion, Jay, on this, or? Well, you, you. Oh. what do you think, Paul? Sally, do you think we need to have just a, a, is consensus okay based on it, on discussion, or do we need to have a motion? Well, we're all down the public here, right? You motion down the public Yeah. Here. Yeah, so. Go ahead, so. What? Go ahead. So, if, if we vote it out of the public hearing, fine. We're going to take a punitive action like that. I don't want to call this, but we need, I think we need to close the public hearing a little bit. Yeah, I did. We're closed. I, yeah, we're closed. 809. I, I, I couldn't hear it. Yeah, no worries. No worries. No worries. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to, I think we should document the call of a motion and then grant the authority to Jonathan. Paul, Paul hit the nail on the head with this grant to make it as a motion. Put everybody on the record. Up and down. Let Jonathan and the Fitzgerald and the uh, animal control officers 
do their job. Mr. It might be, Mr. Chairman, it might be easy to say that the board vo votes to grant the ACO and meet the authority to enter an order that's consistent with General Law Part 1, Title 20, Chapter 140, Section 157, 4I that Mr. Johnson just mentioned, that the dog be humanely restrained, provided, however, that no order shall provide that the dog deemed dangerous be chained. So humanely restrained, so we get the point in. We think that's consistent with the conversation that we have. Can had you uh, yes. can you state that in a way that uh, Michelle can record it so no, that okay. we can make that motion? Sorry. She plays it back. You got it. I have it. Oh, she's good, it. man. Yeah. It. She gave it to us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just looking at the part he did because I'm go I wanted to say this sure. as a motion. So does, to so does somebody want to do something with what Jonathan just said? Yes, I'm reading this right now. So I'd, I'd like to make a motion that as the hearing authority, we deem the, the dog, the dog's nuisance dogs. And we're going to take further order that the owner or keeper of the dogs take remedial action to ameliorate the cause of the nuisance behavior. We deem the, uh, and that the dog be humanely restrained provided, however, that no order shall provide that a dog deemed dangerous be chained, tethered, or otherwise tied to an animate object, including but not limited to a tree post or building. And, and consistent we, with the conversation we had. Consistent with the conversation we had. And that we grant authority to the town administrator, the animal control officer, and the animal and the assistant animal control officer to to I, I, I see a damn motion. I see a twinkle, a twinkle, and I don't want to ignore that twinkle. Go ahead, bring it home to enforce no, you're the good. order. You're good. To enforce the order as they seem Boom. To. Motion by Mr. Second Image. <laughs> Second. Second by Mr. Joseph. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Second. roll call vote. Kerry Siganovich, aye. Paul Joseph, aye. Jay Johnson, aye. Stephen Feldman. Graham Marcy, aye. Unanimous. I just wanted to make sure I got it all out the first time and we want to good. it later. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not bad for it. Right? So I tried. I, so thank you to everybody who came tonight. We appreciate <laughs> you coming forward. I know it's sometimes hard when you have neighbor issues, but you were heard tonight. I, I, as Mr. Siganerich said, I wish your neighbor had come here to kind of talk through it with everybody. But yeah, that's clear. <laughs> and, and I hope your son can ride a <clears throat> yes. scooter in the street. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Under right. select Thank you, comments, Rob. I have nothing. Board member comments. Mr. Joseph has nothing. Mr. Siganarich. Uh In light of tonight, if, if you have a dog, pay the license fee. If your neighbors have an issue, talk to them. Uh, let's all just, as Mr. Johnson said many times during the pandemic, let's just be kind, be good to each other. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Siganarich. Mr. Johnson, anything? Uh, we're glad you're happy, but remember, we've still got a meeting going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple things. Uh, first of all, thank you all to, that came to the uh, Boy Scout Troop 273 yard sale. Uh, uh, a little bit of uh, liquid sunshine to start the day uh, turned into a, a beautiful day. Uh, no one yelled at the traffic people. That's always good. Um, and so that went very well. Thank you. Uh, sec the second thing is um, uh, there's, there's still there's still people dying from from COVID. Uh, a little close to home recently and you know it's I, I don't know if I want to argue uh, the definition of science right now but if you can do what you can to take care of you and yours and not put any other people at risk it would be appreciated you've got a warm hearted side to you after all <laughs> well, it's Thank you, Mr. Johnson. It's been a rough couple days. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Sullivan. 
Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mark. I just want to ask you what Mr. Bru uh, Mr. Johnson just said, as I stated before, I had a family member die of COVID. It's real. It's out there. Please consider the vaccination. Again, I get into a discussion about the science. I chose to get it. Um, also, last week was the election, as we know. I want to congratulate all the candidates. <clears throat> Excuse me. That put their name on the ballot. Still have a bag. Judging by participation and by <coughs> apathy of some of the candidates, Shit I think some candidates took it more serious than others. But I'd also like to thank the clerk for running a good election, for workers, for local quality, thank the voters. Uh, nobody on any ballot, on any race, got 100% of the vote. And I know I speak for myself, and I'm sure I speak for Mr. Massey, and I pledge to do whatever I can to win over the people that didn't vote for me for whatever reason and will continue to represent the people that didn't show up and vote for whatever their reason. I appreciate the support that I got, the uh, fact that the people felt, I guess, confident enough in my ability to do the job and I will give it the best I can for the next three years. So thank you everyone. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. <clears throat> I, I'll echo that as well. Thank you to voters of Dudley. 830 of you showed up. Uh, decent turnout compared to recent years. Um, uh, placing your trust in Stephen and I, again, appreciate that very much. We won't let you down. Um, I will also work to, for those who um, have voted for others. I'm here. I would, you know, would work to win you over. We don't always... Um, we always make sure we try to make people heard, as we did tonight, and um, we work to do the next right thing. So thank you, everybody, who, who came out and voted. All right, <clears throat> departments. Uh, Jeff, do you have anything? Highway? Uh, I don't have anything. No, nope. Steve, nothing. Dean, not here. Mr. Carmignani, anything from the Treasurer Collector's Office? Nice tie. Matches mine. Terrapins. A terrapins. My daughter picked it out. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Start with the good stuff first. Saturday the 26th, St. Andrew Babola is having a Polish food sale. It's $15. Lovely food. Uh, internally, the town of Dudley, everybody who's an active subscriber and has gotten their COVID vaccine is eligible for a $25 CVS gift card. You need to show me the card, uh, show me your vaccination card. We go through, uh, it's one of the Hampshire Council of Governments Insurance Trust incentive, active subscribers only. Um, along those lines, 7-1, we're starting our health insurance. Anybody who's signed up, there's gonna be a new card that comes out end of this week, beginning of next. Remember, it's a 7-1 anniversary date. We started pulling the deductions with the new amount for June 1st. There is a separate CVS card uh, for prescription drug coverage. Uh, real estate, 2021 demands are out. The 2022 should be in your mailbox on or before July 1st. Uh, water sewer bills are due this week. Recycling stickers are on sale Wednesday and, thir uh, Wednesday and Saturday. Look for them. Uh, just a handful so far. Other than that, thank you. Jeff and Rich, when, the, when do the uh, question? When do the uh, sales go until for the, for the recycling center? For the, the stickers. Wednesday till eight till noon. Okay. Saturday, same thing, eight till noon. And they have to get that by July first. The old stickers expire 7-1. Seven, 7-1. One. Seven, one. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I move to adjourn. Joseph. Motion by Mr. Joseph to adjourn. Second. Oh. Second. Second by Mr. Sikinevich. Roll call vote. All <coughs> Joseph, aye. Carrie. Carrie Sikinevich, aye. Joe Johnson, aye. Tonight. John Marcy, I thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. God bless. <laughs> Stay safe.